Hello, this is Michael Osborne with WebEcator. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to extend the ASP.NET Identity Provider. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Imran Ghani, and Imran agreed to let us create this video discussing his article, which is available on his blog at the URL shown here. So let's begin by talking about the Identity Provider a little bit. Identity Provider is really a successor to the earlier ASP.NET Membership Provider. Now, Membership Provider was a great tool in its own right, but quite frankly, it was somewhat inflexible. So Microsoft decided to provide us with Identity Provider. Now, Identity Provider is based on an entity database model, and because of that, it is much more flexible. It supports things like local persistence. It also integrates easily with Facebook, Google, Twitter. So if you want to do your authentication using for example, Facebook or Google logins, you can do that. It integrates easily with the Azure Active Directory. And because it uses OWIN middleware, there's really no dependency on system.web. So it's really just a much more flexible way to support authentication and authorization. So before we begin talking about how to customize Identity Provider, let's just go take a look at the uh, default implementation, if you will, of Identity Provider in a web application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project here, and this will be a project of type ASP.NET Web Application. So we're going to go to C Sharp here. We'll go to Web. We'll be in, build an ASP.NET Web Application. We're going to call this Test Identity. And this will be an application using the MVC template. And you want to ensure that our author, uh, I'm sorry, our authentication specifies individual user, individual user accounts. Now, you'll notice you could choose other options. We have organizational accounts and Windows authentication. But for now, really just looking at how to extend the individual user accounts. So we'll just go ahead and say OK there and let it create our application. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice if you expand your references is that we have some references to a couple of namespaces. Specifically, I've got the ASP.NET Identity Core, the Identity Entity Framework, and the ASP.NET Identity OWIN namespaces. Now, we're going to go ahead and build this project real quick. And as soon as it's built, we're going to browse down to our views. Let me find these real quick. In our views, under the account folder, and we're going to find our register view. We're going to right click on this guy, and we're going to view it in the browser. We'll just use Internet Explorer. And you'll notice that in our registration form, we have three uh, fields, if you will, a username, a password, and a confirmed password. So what we want to do is extend this to add some additional information. So the first thing we're going to need to do in order to add these additional fields is we're going to have to go add some custom properties into our application user class. So we're going to start our application here real quick. And we're going to go to the uh, models folder. And in the models folder, you'll notice we have an identity models.cs. If you look in identity models, you will see, and let me make a little room here so you can see this a little better, that I have a couple of things. I have a application user and an application DB context. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some modifications here. We're going to add in a couple of fields into our application user class. So what we'll do is this. So what I have done is I have added here three public fields into the application user class, a field for the email, one for the address, and one for the phone number. 
Okay, so now the application user has been modified. The next thing we need to do is customize our register view model. So before I do this, I'm going to do a quick build to make sure that my modifications are available in my IntelliSense. And now we're going to go to this account view model class. And you'll notice in here I have a register view model defined and in the register view model you'll notice we already have the username the password and the confirm password which we had previously so what I need to do is I need to now add in these additional fields so let me go ahead and take care of that real quick Okay, so I've added in the three additional fields, the email, the address, and the phone number. And note that I decorated these with a couple of attributes. First of all, the email address is a required field, so I've decorated it with the required attribute. And each one of the fields has been given a display name property to describe how to what name to reflect in the interface. So now we've changed our identity model. We've also changed our register view model. The next step is to modify our register form. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our views. We're going to go to the register CSHTML file here. And we're going to add a few fields in. We're going to add in the email, the address, and the phone number using some HTML helpers. So that looks something like this. Okay, so we've added the three fields into our form. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make a modification to our account controller. So to modify our account controller, we will go to our controllers folder and we will find the account controller. And you'll notice in the account controller, we have a register method. And let me find it here real quick here. Register, there we go. And you'll notice in the register method, as part of the registration, we register the fields on the form. Now, currently, it's registering the model uh, username. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our fields in here like this. Now, at this point, we should be able to build our application. And once it's build, we should, built, we should be able to run it. And if we then go to the registration tab right here, you should now see that we have the additional fields included in the form and in the model. And in fact, they will persist in wherever it is we're persisting our identity information. Okay, I'd like to again thank Imran Ghani for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL you see here for some other articles related to ASP.NET web development. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.